Um, I bought a new voiceover along. So I see. Um, <laughs> welcome. Um, so take it away. Welcome to a gay and a non-gay, a podcast with James Barr and Dan Hudson. Woo! Thanks so much. I'm not sure what else we'll get her to do whilst we're here, but... <laughs> who, who knows? Who knows? And let's not name her. Welcome to a gay and a non-gay. So I had um, a really interesting chat with a friend recently. Okay. Who has moved to the countryside. Again, I don't want to name any names, but he's moved to the countryside out of the city and he's having a bit of a crisis and he's sort of questioning who he is as a person because now he doesn't live near any other gay people and he's outside of the London bubble and doesn't know. He's like, well, he's, he, he's basically thirsty. He's the only There's gay. There's no cock. And he's the only gay in the village. Yeah. Well done, Dan. Yeah, I was trying to it's get so, that out for a few minutes. So mate. on trend with the quotes. Um, and he, uh, yeah, so he was like, oh, I might even have sex with this woman at the pub. <laughs> so I just laughed in an evil cackle. I did offer him head, though, so it's fine. But um, it didn't happen. I wanted to say, though, but he said this amazing thing. He said, it's really great listening to your podcast, James. I love it because it proves that a gay and a non-gay person can have like a relationship of friendship. Whereas actually there's a lot of people outside of London that, that would not dream of doing that. And it's kind of odd to them to be, because fr he's friends with lots of straight people now and it's odd to them to have a gay friend. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like w when you're gay, you kind of like run away to the city and be free. Yeah. And there's all these other people left behind that don't understand that. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. feel like it's an odd thing. Yeah, I'm sure. And, but it's so not odd. I, mean, I haven't really got anything to add. I mean, I, I, agree. No, I'm just I agree. doing a monologue, sorry. But um, no, I, I agree completely. Uh, and thanks to your friend for his uh, feedback. So he wants to have sex with a woman. Yeah, he thought about it. That's weird. Is that, I don't know, is that weird? Is that something that you have has crossed your no. mind? Never, ever, ever? No. What's, no, never. What's the most you've done with a woman? Um, <laughs> how have you never asked me this? I don't know. Um, oh my God, when I was... Um, when I was younger, I went to a Christian Bible camp uh, with a friend, this is all true, uh, called Sammy. That was my girlfriend, Sammy. Okay. I'd actually already experimented with boys at this point, but I hadn't even kissed her. Right. So I think we held hands. That was probably as far as it went. Yeah, we did. We held hands because I remember them being in Charles Street in Brighton, this gay pub with loads of friends, and we were playing a game of like dares and stuff. And there was a girl, and I had to kiss her as a dare. And I kissed her, and I was like, that's the first time I've kissed a girl. FYI, it was awful. Was it the first and last? Yeah. Uh, no, I have kissed girlfriends before, uh, since then, like when we've been drunk in nightclubs. We went to a, I went to a power ballad tonight with my friend Mel. <laughs> we got really emotional dancing to Celine. So it was really gay, but well, yeah. M Mel that I know. Not Mel that you know. Okay. You know my friend Mel? Not your friend Mel, my friend Mel. Oh, I know who you mean. I do know who you mean, yeah. Okay. But yeah, that's not who I meant, but that's not who I meant. So yeah, yeah that's that. Um, have you ever experimented with a guy? No. Have you ever held a guy's hand? Uh, actually, I did by accident once. Um, when I first moved to uni, so I would have been 18, I bought this guy a drink, just like, do you want a drink, mate, kind of thing. Oh, yeah, that's how it starts. <laughs> no, like, I... Hey, can I buy you I a drink? Hey, sure. Well, I didn't... What's your name, Dan? Where do you live? Um, in the halls. Oh, me too. What room? 243. Great. Come on down. Um, I've me. got more beers back at mine if you want to come over. Did you know him? Do you know his name? No. You, what? You bought a guy a drink you didn't know his name? <laughs> no, this is so, you are so coming on to him. No, I didn't know anyone at this point because it was like day one of right, university. So you, so. so you chatted up a guy. That you were, It was the new you. You were like, I'm, I'm new here. I can now be the real me. I've gone to uni. I've run away from all my friends. No one knows me. <laughs> I know. I'll try it on with a guy. <laughs> So I was chatting to this guy because he was like the second person to move in, and I was like the first. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, "Do you want a drink?" Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, he had the drink, and then I didn't see him again for like two weeks. And oh then... my god, that's so heartbreaking! <laughs> <laughs> well, I had, did, I did you chat through the drink? <laughs> did I chat? Did you chat to him? Wait, hang on. I asked the, the question I asked you here was, "Have you ever held a guy's hand?" Well, I'm getting to and, that, and now you're telling me <laughs> that you you bought him a drink. I'm getting to that. I, I I didn't think anything of it, and then I saw him in the in the same bar like two weeks later, and he was like, "Oh, I owe you a drink," and I was like, "Oh yeah, cool." And I, like I shook his hand and the rest, but for some reason he like carry, he like carried on holding like t like holding my hand, and it was just really it was I just didn't really know what to do. It's hard to explain. I know that I know that. That's when what, sorry, why did he hold your hand? Because we went to like, like shake hands or whatever, and then he just then he just didn't let go. Wow, wow, it was really weird. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I didn't know what to do. And he's not gay, or as far as I'm aware. I feel really rude. I started eating, I started eating well, an, enchil- an enchilada halfway through. <laughs> and I sort of lost interest. <laughs> if anyone else is still with us. <laughs> Sorry. So did you have sex with him or not? <laughs> Obviously, I didn't know. It, but, but why did he hold your hand? Did, because is, I don't know. This is what I'm saying. Did I, he want some? No, he's... Did okay. he misread your... Or do you want a drink, no, mate? I think, or do you want a drink? I don't I don't think so, but he did, like, hold my hat and for about, like, five or six seconds, and then, like, he, he sort of, like, let go. Anyway, that answers your... I didn't say did you feel anything in your trousers when this happened? No, I felt something in my head. I was like, fucking hell, what's going on here? Like, how... how I have it? so many questions, Dan. Um, did he, <laughs> like, move his finger a little bit when he was holding your hand? No. Did, no, did no. he give you... Was he looking at you? Does he uh, maintain, did I, he maintain eye contact? I don't know. Why? Where were your eyes? You uh, <laughs> I kind of need to... Right, you were checking I'll, him I'll, out. I'll demonstrate what he did, right? That will be great on a podcast. Yeah, yeah well, please, so carry you, on. So that you know. Okay, all right. The listeners won't know. I can explain it. So it went to like shake his hand like that. With it, like a claw? With yeah. With all his fingers out? Yeah, and then he just kind of like stayed... Okay, did he squeeze like really hard? Like It's probably about meeting. this level of hardness. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so immature. <laughs> okay, cool. So anyway, that's, that's the end of that great story. Um, well, I didn't actually say it was a great story. You no, asked, but it's you asked still the question, interesting. Like, and that's so, the answer. I have a question about um, heterosexual protocol. Do you? Right. If is it weird for another guy to buy a guy a drink? No. Is it weird for you to buy a girl or a if straight you don't manager? know them? Uh, yeah, but this, if, is, uh, this if, is Freshers' if, Week, isn't doesn't it? Doesn't matter. No, no, no. Same. It's like walking to a bar, not knowing anyone. Doesn't matter if it's Freshers' Week. That argument does not stand. If I walk into a bar and I don't know someone, there's a, another straight. Uh, there's a guy I don't know at the bar, and I'm like, "Hey, mate, do you want a drink?" This is literally what happened to you, right? No, no other <laughs> yeah, dialogue. Yeah, it, it is. However, the situation in which it occurred was one where everybody was meeting random <laughs> people, so it's not. As- uh, I don't know. You don't know well, what? Well, no, I don't, I don't think that counts. I think it's the same. So it's Saturday night. I'm out in Soho. I don't know anyone. I walk into uh, all bar one, and there's a guy at the bar on his own as well. So, and I say, oh, hey, do you want a drink, mate? That's, that's, that's a come on. That's a come on. In that situation, yeah, probably. Okay, I'm in Carlisle, and I walk into a pub, and I don't know anyone, and there's a guy at the bar on his own. And I'm like, hey, do you want a drink, mate? What are we doing going around the whole country? I'm just giving you an example. I'm just trying to put it in a more (laughs) ungay location, so rather than saying Soho. So, okay, I'm in Newcastle, whatever. But, like, if you walk into a bar and you offer another guy a drink, that's a come on, isn't it? Well, maybe he thought that. You're saying, no, it was fresh as week, I was trying to make friends. But I think you were giving him a message. And that message was, if you want it, come and get it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is going to be very naughty. It's a gay and disappointingly a non-gay. <laughs> I love that. Can we have that every time? It's something dis- disappointing. <laughs> disappointingly a non-gay. Got the, the full, full, oh, that was um, great. Full three sixty. You have a you have show feedback too. Yeah. So this is from my uh, this is from um, Scott in New York. Uh, he says I listened to the gay and non-gay the day after. Uh, basically, he just says it's really funny uh, and like. Wait, sorry, what? You, is this someone you met at the bar in, in New York on your own? You're like, hey, do you want a drink? No, basically, uh, it's a long story and you're just going to like... You're Let s- me tell a story because I don't know piss, I'm going to make the story up. So I think... That, so Dan has told me previously when I go to New York, I should have done this Scott Pizza Tour thing. And I'm like, what? why? I could go on a Friends Tour or a Sex and the City Tour. Why would I want to go on a pizza tour? Although I do love pizza. So anyway, fast forward a year. Dan's just been to New York and... Um, and then this tweet comes in saying, "Oh, from Scott, this pizza guy who I don't know, saying, um, oh, I've checked out your, I checked out your podcast. It's just about English enough for me.' What does that mean? <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure what that means. But so you obviously but went it's... on his pizza thing, right? You went on his pizza tour again. Well, I've done it um, four times actually already. Wow. I mean, like, check it out, guys. James and Catherine are putting faces, but they've never done it once, so they don't know. So, like, please, what the... no, please, what? Having done it before, um." Talia emailed him and said, hi, because it was my birthday when I was in New York, uh, and she was like, oh, um, is there anywhere where you, you'd recommend where we can make pizza? Like- For new uh, new people to the podcast, Talia is Dan's girlfriend yes. who set this podcast up. She said, is there anywhere where we can like learn to make pizza? You know, you do like, wacky sort of cookery classes or whatever. Don't look. You know exactly what I mean. Don't look. No, like I'm you just. Don't. I'm like, yeah, okay. Anyway, he said, uh, yeah, there's this one, but actually, you just come around to my house and make pizza. So we did. Amazing. 
Um, That's genuinely awesome. And we, we did, and we made like <laughs> incredible pizza. So you went round, Scott, so he does a tour, right? Yeah. But you that actually ended up going around his house and made pizza. Yeah. That's brilliant. Uh, the pizza was amazing. Is he qualified to do that? Or, <laughs> Probably not. Actually. What's his rating? <laughs> did you? Did he charge well, you? No, but we we I donated to we donated to his charity because we felt he's got a pizza charity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what for homeless pizzas? <laughs> <laughs> for Sorry, home- everyone. I've had a glass of wine. It's a, a bit a bit ridiculous. Hang on, he's got a pizza charity. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, why? He, he's gonna. He, is it for pineapple that's been hated on? You're gonna. Sp- you're to gonna stop fair, laughing I, the I second hate, I tell you what it is. Yeah, <laughs> don't, please don't. Don't tell me because I'll feel awful. Because pineapple gets a lot of hate crimes, doesn't it? Pineapple on pizza is really hated on, and it's not fair, guys. It's not fair. What's this charity really for? You, you're gonna feel awful when I tell you. What's it for? It's for hungry homeless children in New York. Oh, that's really lovely. <laughs> That's really, that's really beautiful, actually. Oh, how nice. hi, Scott. If you're listening, I will, he will also, be listening. Actually, I will now, now donate too. I'm going to New York soon, so I will donate. Are you going to do the, the pizza tour? Probably not. <laughs> this is what I'm, this is what I'm saying. Is why, Scott, why, is Scott why are you hot not, or not? Is he hot? It's it's not for me to say. But well, I tell you what. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've made this so bloody awkward now. I, you've just literally put me on the spot. A guy I don't know, he's now going to feel really victimised that I don't want to meet him. Because you said, do you want to go on his tour? And I'm like, I'm not sure I can be bothered. That's now put me in an awful position. Well, just go. Just it's keep... like, it's the equivalent of you being like, us going out and you going, oh, do you want to come over to my mum's to meet her? I mentioned you might come. Great. Now I've got a bloody come. No, I don't want to meet him. <laughs> okay, well, I'm sorry, Scott. <laughs> Me too, but I will donate to your incredibly important <laughs> charity, Scott. <laughs> Help the pineapple. <laughs> no, that is a really good charity. I'm so, I'm so kidding. There's a special so place ch- in hell for you. Made me laugh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we need more voiceovers to move on. That's weird. You went to his house. Thank yeah. you, Catherine. <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. Catherine, the voiceover has popped up. <laughs> Who put 50 pence in her? Like, yeah. did he eat your pizza that you made him? Like, isn't he supposed to be creating the pizza for you? Well, we took it in turns to make, there was four of us, and we took it in turns to make pizza. At his house? Yeah. Mm. And then did you all do it? Over, over hot mozzarella? Did you do it? If, 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 if by that you mean, did we eat the pizza? Yes, very much so. Did he stuff your crust as well? <laughs> Did he fold you over? <laughs> <laughs> Slice you like a ripe tomato. Popped you in a cow zone. I don't know where we're going anymore. We've run out. <laughs> <laughs> and what what else did you do while you were in New York, Dan? This and that. Went to some went to some gigs. Went to some museums. Did you? <laughs> oh wow! Did you go to the Whitney? No, I <laughs> I've been before. Yeah, isn't it great? Which ones did you go to this time? Which museums? Yeah. Uh, I went to the Museum of the City of New York. Wow. Twice. Cool. Twice? Why? Yeah. C- couldn't get it all in the first time. I've been there, Jane. Dan. We've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, James is out, go? out of control today. What other, what other museum did you uh, go to, Dan? <laughs> well, you know what? We went to the Museum of... Oh, what, what, don't say it like that. You went there. So, we went to the, mu- the Museum of Sex. Yes, he did. Which... So, you went to the Museum of Sex. <laughs> Why? It's interesting, isn't it? The whole history of sex is interesting. And sex in the media and blah, blah, blah is is, is interesting. Do you not think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just interested that you went. Well, <laughs> so. I, I'm, I'm a very interesting person. So I mean, I yeah, of course. It's, it's definitely interesting. So you were looking, did you look at, what did you look at? Was it quite a lot of porn? Yeah, there's a lot of porn. Basically. Did you see like, but like Victorian porn? Victorian porn. <laughs> I I genuinely didn't think that porn was invented until like the seventies or like really the oldest, or but the sixties. Yeah. No way. Seriously. Oh, Dan. It just seems like a completely different You've age. You've got so much to catch up on. <laughs> Why have you got have you got a stash of Victorian porn? <laughs> um, actually, no. I do want to talk about the cup. What's the cup? It's co- right. You need to Google this because this is incredible. This is not comedy. It's called the Warren Cup, and it's in the British Museum, um, and it's amazing. It depicts two or three Roman men having sex with each other. There's like two guys having sex, and then a servant guy opening the door, like looking at it, and it's amazing because it was made before Christ, and it just proves that actually, like 
there's always been this. So it's not like a new thing. So like, why are people so against? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's amazing. I really love it. Check it out. The yeah. Warren Cup. Everyone. I'm looking at it. I haven't really got anything funny to say about it. No, that's what I mean. But it's, I guess, you know, cool. Um, well, I guess when you think about it, yeah. I mean, people have probably been gay since... Yeah, it's just love, isn't it? Whatever, one. yeah. Or fun, whatever you want to think of it as. Maybe maybe what happened on the Warren Cup is he just went to a freshers week and met a guy <laughs> and was like, do you want a beer? And next thing, they're all fucking. I don't know. Could it be that? Yeah, it could be that. I'm sure freshers week was a big, big deal in uh, 1843. <laughs> right, Dan's got his first ever... Um, Improv show this week, haven't you, Dan? Uh, yeah, I'm You're doing, performing for the first time. I'm doing two. Uh, having never done it before, I'm doing two in three days. That's amazing. Yeah. Are you excited? I'm excited to see you. Are you? Yes. Are you going to come? Only to the second one. Only to the second I one. I don't want to be on your first one. Why not, bro? You might be nervous. And I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thanks. Uh, no, I definitely am excited to see you. It's on Wednesday. Oh, God, yes. I'm in a show, so I'm going to have to get out of that, but I wouldn't miss it for the world. Um, it's a shame this podcast would have gone out after, because I'm sure hundreds of your fans would have loved to have come. Um, today, to warm you up for the performance, I bought an improv professional <laughs> into the studio. Should okay. Catherine Bennett-Fox, who has... Catherine, you're our first ever podcast guest. Oh, uh, yeah. Can we have a round of applause from the studio audience? <laughs> um, and Catherine has performed at the Edinburgh Fringe... And also in New York at the Del Close, oh, wow. Del Close Improv Marathon last summer. Did you and in the many other of sex when you were in New York? No, missed it. Missed, missed it. it. <laughs> missed out on Scott, missed out on the sex. It's good. <laughs> yeah. So, great. Anyway. Good stuff. And, um, <laughs> so, yeah, I thought I'd bring Catherine into the studio and critique your improv skills. <laughs> Give you some notes ahead right. of your performance. Um, I mean, I'm not sure, I'm not sure this is going to work. Because... So, the first thing we need to do is um, uh, shall I give you a word, Dan? Uh, so an improv show normally starts with a word taken from the audience and then um, the performers will have to monologue, think of a story immediately about that word that doesn't last too long and doesn't bore them. So I'll just throw a word at you, Dan. You can give me some inspiration for a scene okay. by doing a monologue. <laughs> okay. And can then, I just say as a disclaimer that improv works because there's an audience of people yep. that find it funny? Right. Yeah, it's okay. There's an audience listening. <laughs> okay, just stop trying to forget. Stop trying to get out of it, Dan. No, I'm... Um, so, your word is... Mosh pit. Um... Ah, da -da -da. Oh, the audience has left. Sorry, half the audience just went... <laughs> God. Well, I've, I've been in plenty, but I can't think of, a, like, a funny no, story. No, this isn't... You're not doing this right. That's not how the show would work, would it? You wouldn't walk up there and go, oh, well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so let's just give you another word. Okay. Ready? Iron Maiden. <laughs> I have actually got a story about Iron Maiden. Great, Iron Maiden. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, I used to really fancy Iron Maiden's brother. Anyway, not about me, back to you. Sorry, who's Iron Maiden's brother? Uh, it's called Rob Dixon, he's in Catherine Wheel. Great band from my youth, it's so hot. Because Iron Maiden is, a, is five men. That's true. I feel I've diverted. Anyway, shall I give you a new word? <laughs> no, no, that's good. <laughs> it's um, too late now. Sunshine, love, Talia. So many words. Oh, uh, so Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> First laugh of the monologue. He's off. He's I'm, off. Yeah, I'm straight in <laughs> there. It. I've seen Iron Maiden loads of times, uh, and I have um, the most recent time that I saw them was in Nebworth in 2014, and I knew all the words to their song "Aces High," which is obviously a, a seminal um, metal anthem. This guy came over to c congratulate me on the fact that I knew all the words. No way. And he started, I was genuinely not making this up. And he started shaking my hand to say, like, oh, thanks. And then, much like the guy in Freshers Week, he didn't stop shaking my hand. And he put his tongue in your mouth. No. And it was funny for like a minute. And then he just kept going and kept going and kept going. And he was like a big guy. So he had like a firm grip on my handshake. And he just wouldn't let go. My mate, well, two of my mates. Okay, your monologue is now going on too long. Well, <laughs> like, that's definitely enough. But it's great, so many specifics. I've got so much to play yep. with now. A that was really guy. great, great okay. monologue. So, did you feel like that was enough? Uh, I thought it was great. I was looking forward to a little bow on it at the end. Well, you're, yeah, I mean, you won't get it now. Okay, carry on. <laughs> I've been told that before. <laughs> 